I'm Mike Quackenbush. This is Till We Make It. And now, the intro rolls. You know how it works, right? Hey, earlier this week, we put out a video about battling your wrestling burnout. And in Wednesday's video, I talked about the fact that this is the thing that got me more response than any other video on the Till We Make It channel up to right now. I've had so many friends and peers reach out to me about that, and then they went a step further and asked for a little bit more. And to all of you and everybody out there watching, here are some recommendations that might help inspire you. So I want to start off with five podcasts, and you'll recall in Monday's video I alluded to the idea of learning a new skill. A lot of times when you're learning that skill, you can't help but see all the points of intersection with the world of professional wrestling. And I don't doubt some of the ones I'm going to recommend to you will provide a similar experience. I want to start with the most obvious of all, because I name dropped it in that burnout video. It's the Accidental Creative Podcast by Todd Henry. Luckily for both you and for me, Todd Henry's been at the podcasting game for about a decade, and he has made hundreds and hundreds of episodes, but I want to refer you to one as a starting point from May of 2019. Look for the episode called The Proximity Principle. Everything that Todd makes is filled with value, and it's exceptionally important that creative professionals like you and I listen to what he has to say. He often has great guests who bring great points and counterpoints, and there's always a robust discussion around it. I also don't mind telling you I was a guest on The Accidental Creative, and I think it's one of the worst podcast appearances I ever made. So I'm being very sincere when I tell you, you can skip right over that one. Do not listen. I really do mean that. That's not like a backdoor thing where I secretly want you to listen. It's not one of those. It really wasn't good. It was a two-hour conversation. He cut it down to just a few minutes. I knew he hated it. I knew it. I knew he hated it! And now a podcast I have never been on but wish that I were. Improv Nerd with Jimmy Corain. It is one of the longest-running improv comedy podcasts, and Jimmy brings a unique experience to it in that he teaches improv in the Chicago scene, in addition to being a performer with decades of experience. It is a somewhat rare treat when a new improv nerd comes out from Jimmy Corain. It seems as if, for the most part, the podcast is now defunct, although every once and again, you'll see one in the feed. What I love about the hundreds and hundreds of episodes of Improv Nerd out there is that Jimmy typically leads each episode with a monologue, where he is very raw and real about what he feels, sometimes regarding other performers, like shame and jealousy which are things we often don't talk about here in professional wrestling, and yet I feel like he's done a lot to help equip me to deal with those feelings and talk about them. And I think you will find him to be remarkably helpful too. If you want a starting point, there is no more powerful episode than the February 17th, 2014 episode where Jamie Campbell is his guest star. And if for some reason that's not enough to whet your appetite, I'm going to do a little bit more. Because since that aired, Jamie and I have become friends. Thanks to the great maven of pro wrestling, who else? Colt Cabana, who put us in touch years ago. Jamie Campbell goes on Improv Nerd to talk about not just his career as a stand-up and storyteller, and in part talk a little bit about his love of professional wrestling, but about being abducted as a child and how that informs where he performs from. It is remarkable and deeply moving. My third podcast recommendation for you is called Risk, and it's hosted by Kevin Allison. You may remember him as a cast member on The State, which was a sketch comedy team that had a four-season-long run on MTV in the mid to late 90s. Some discretion, dear viewer. Risk is extraordinarily uncensored, and you want to be very careful who you are listening to Risk with or around. I can tell you it's the kind of content I would not have played in front of my Grammy. Each episode of Risk contains between one and three stories, and these are not told by professional orators or stand-up comedians necessarily. They are real people, and they're telling stories that in many cases drudge up past trauma or other unfortunate events. Most episodes of Risk could not be said to be heartwarming. If anything, they are heart-wrenching. And I tell you very sincerely, more than once, an episode of Risk has reduced me to tears listening to it because the storytellers unleash such raw feeling when recounting these stories. The reason I am recommending Risk to you 
is because I don't doubt listening to the way in which these are delivered is going to influence the way in which you cut promos. And it may make you a little more fearless the next time you've got to summon real emotion to the stage. At the time we're recording this for you, Risk is already more than 10 years old, and it would be very difficult for me to go back through all of those podcasts and try to pick out just one as a starting point, but I'll give you a little context. A Risk single episode is exactly what you think, it's one story. The ones that run over an hour usually contain multiple stories, and about twice a year you're going to get a Best of Risk compiling some of the most outrageous stories from that previous season. You'll see it hit your podcast feed like a regular episode, except it's denoted as Best of. My next podcast recommendation is one of the most popular podcasts out there. It is called The Art of Charm, and it too has hundreds and hundreds of episodes that cover a wide array of topics that will intersect both your personal life and your professional life. And you're going to discover there's a shared space there that absolutely overlaps our lives as performers. And because their back catalog is impossibly deep to navigate, I'll give you this recommendation. Check out episode 554 entitled, To Sell is Human. And I guarantee you're already going to start to see all the points of intersection. My fifth and final podcast recommendation to you will most certainly stoke the entrepreneurial flame within you. I'm referring to the long-running podcast made by Pat Flynn called The Smart Passive Income Podcast. Although in its early years, the thrust of Pat Flynn's podcast was obviously that titular item, passive income, how to build systems that will generate money for you over the long term, but only require that the work be front loaded. But over the years, it has just delved into so many different topics and has become so beneficial to anybody that has to manage their own business. And that really is what professional wrestling is, even if the only business you have to manage is your personal brand. And when it comes to branding, you could do a lot worse than to start with episode 333. That's the Branding Masterclass on Pat Flynn's Smart Passive Income Podcast. I hope you find value in all five of those. I don't doubt each of them might get your imagination and gears turning in different ways. So I've given you five podcasts, and now I want to give you five things to seek out and watch. And these are all from the world of professional wrestling. Let's start with something near and dear to my heart. It's Michinoku Pro between the autumn of 1995 and the autumn of 1997. Anything in that two-year zone, I happen to think, is absolute gold. There is definitely stuff from that era that you can find on YouTube or over on Daily Motion. Not that the algorithm ever wants you to leave YouTube. But you'll know you're on the right track if you can find any six man, eight man, or ten man tags that Michinoku Pro put on in those two years. My second wrestling recommendation for you is Titanes NL Ring. That's Titans in the Ring. And it is wrestling from Argentina. Titanes NL Ring starts in the 60s, but it really reaches its height by the mid-70s. And in the 80s, it dies. You want to find the original Titanes NL Ring. That's the creation of Martin Caradagian. Later on, other members of his family and other television executives try to resuscitate Titanes NL Ring in the 90s and coming forward into the future. And I'm just here to tell you, I don't think you want those more modern reincarnations. You want classic Titanes NL Ring. If you start checking out Titanes NL Ring here on YouTube, I want to forewarn you. They made two movies during the height of Titanes NL Ring, and you are likely to find them first. But I would encourage you to watch the individual television episodes, which are weird, fun, and colorful. Despite the common misconception that custom entrance music as a phenomenon in pro wrestling began here in the United States, that's false. It begins with Titanes NL Ring more than a decade before it comes here to the United States. And you'll notice each of their characters has their own custom and very catchy theme song. If while you're digging around you come across a treasure trove of Titanes, try to aim for the stuff in their glory period which is the 1970s. They haven't quite found their footing by the end of the 60s and they're on their last legs by the 80s. The 70s is the sweet spot for Titanes. And my third recommendation is going to require that we cross the Atlantic because we are headed to Great Britain for World of Sport. Luckily, World of Sport from its glory period is abundant online. You don't have to do a whole lot of searching to find any, and it too is filled with wild characters, from the heavyweights right on down to the lightweights. To clear up any possible confusion, 
World of Sport is the name of a television program. It is not the name of a wrestling promotion. But the World of Sport program on ITV in Great Britain aired wrestling alongside other sports. However, for shorthand in the world of wrestling, we often just call all of that World of Sport. If you're looking for an introductory course to World of Sport and video's not your thing, I could not recommend highly enough Simon Garfield's book on it, The Wrestling, which covers the rise and fall of World of Sport Wrestling on TV. It gets canceled, I think, in 1988. And a few years leading up to that, they are not exactly delivering their best material. That's kind of what caused the ratings to fall. But if you want to watch some choice World of Sport Wrestling, choose between the years 1977 and 1982 for the very best stuff. And my fourth recommendation for those of you out there feeling a little burned out for something new in your wrestling diet is this. Check out Joshi Wrestling from the year 1994. And what do I mean by Joshi Wrestling? I mean wrestling done by women in Japan. And specifically, focus on the year 1994 and these three organizations, All Japan Women's, JWP, and FMW. For my money, 1994 is one of the most transformative years in all of professional wrestling, and the Joshis have a lot to do with it. When you're watching All Japan Women's, be on the lookout for names like Manami Toyota and Chaparita Asari. When you're watching FMW, look for girls named Megumi Kudo and Combat Toyota, with a D, not a T at the end. And when you watch JWP, which is sometimes referenced as the JWP Project back then, you're going to look for names like Hikari Fukuoka and Candy Okutsu. Last but not least, all my recommendations of things within the realm of professional wrestling to help freshen you up are the mini estrellas, the mini superstars, from Mexico. There is a championship specifically for the mini estrellas in AAA, and those title matches tend to be really good. And there's also an annual tournament, or sometimes Cibernetico, in CMLL for all the minis that wrestle there. Stylistically, some of the things that you're going to see, you will not see anywhere else in all of professional wrestling because they can only be realized by the minis. Last but not least, for those of you out there feeling a bit burnt out and you need some new podcasts to spark your imagination, you want some new wrestling to inspire you, I've also got some book recommendations for you that I want to run down for you now. If you are involved in the promoting or marketing of professional wrestling, I cannot recommend strongly enough the John Janch book from 2006, Duct Tape Marketing. Duct Tape Marketing focuses on strategies for small businesses with limited budgets, and if you only represent your own personal brand, that might be you. But you might also work on behalf of an organization that also has a small budget or otherwise operates under the auspices of being a small business. And no matter which of those conditions it satisfies, Duct Tape Marketing is a godsend. If you perform or you write for performers, let me recommend John Truby's timeless tome, The Anatomy of Story, for you. This is referenced constantly when it comes to things like screenwriting and narrative. There is so much that Truby covers in The Anatomy of Story, but two things that I think are invaluable takeaways from this revolve around character motivations and character arcs and what makes that believable to an audience. I think that's exceptionally relevant to all of us in professional wrestling, where sometimes the motivations of characters are not made clear and the arcs can feel deeply unsatisfying. I would love to show you the third book on my list. It's called Jab, 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 Right Hook. It's by my friend Gary Vaynerchuk, but I can't show it to you because it is the book I am asked to loan out more often than any other. And I don't know who has it right now, but I know it hasn't come back to me this most recent time for me to hold it up and show it. But don't worry, everything I'm referencing, I'm gonna link to below in the description. You can find it there. But Jab, 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 Right Hook, I think, is the most important book written on social media. And if you need help managing a social media channel or multiple channels, the way in which you're going to curate that content is outlined beautifully by Gary in the pages of that book. My fourth book recommendation for you is this one by Derek Thompson. It's called Hitmakers. And this book took me longer to get through than any book I have ever owned in my entire life. And it's not egregiously thick by any means, but it is dense reading about popularity. What makes things trend? What makes them go viral? And what makes them popular? 
Thompson's book came out in 2017 by Penguin Press, and it did spend a little while on the national bestsellers list. It is a deep dive into the science of popularity. I think it even says that right here on the cover, it does. Uh, he covers all kinds of topics, though, and it's not just current topics. He goes all the way back to Johann Brahms, comes all the way forward to Fifty Shades of Grey. So he's got very ancient examples to back up his arguments. He's also got very current ones as well. It's a fascinating read, Hitmakers by Derek Thompson. And I have a final recommendation for you. It's my book. I want you to buy my book. It's called Seven Keys to Becoming a Better Performer, a book for fellow pro wrestlers by Mike Quackenbush. I wrote it two years ago. I poured a lot of myself into this book. It's a lot about the journey I went on during the years where I wasn't performing actively and how I came to have new revelations about what we make in professional wrestling that I only learned while I was out there developing all these other skills. Then I learned how to apply all of that to what we make in professional wrestling, and I put it into this very thin book that I very much want you to buy. It's available on Amazon.com, or I'll read you the audiobook on Audible.com, and both of them are linked below. The volume of response I have heard since Monday's Battling Burnout video came out has been very encouraging, and I'm really glad that the content we're creating is meeting the subscribers right when they need it the most. A lot of the great ideas that you see explored in these videos come from the comments section below. That's where the dialogue is always ongoing. So feel free to leave your thoughts below. You keep on being awesome, hmm? and we will keep on making the videos. Together, we'll keep on faking it.